Welcome to the Private Practice with Soul podcast. My name is Dr. Brooklyn Storm and I help private practice owners align their business back with their soul's calling, with their big vision and with their soul's purpose. Unlike other private practice coaches, I've traveled the world in search of spiritual resources, spiritual tools, education and information so that you can have the transformation that your soul desires and needs so that you can up-level your business. How much fun is this? I love it so much. Guys, if you're not already a member of the Private Practice Monthly Mentorship Group, please check out the show notes. I would love for you to be there. In the meantime, thank you so much for pushing play today. Let's begin. Hello, 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 it's Brooklyn. Welcome to another episode of the Private Practice with Soul podcast. I'm so pleased that you're here today. Thank you very, very much for pushing play on another episode. And welcome, of course, to all of our new subscribers. So everyone, how was your week? Oh my gosh, we've got some beautiful celebrations happening in the ACPPO this week with people getting their first referrals and accepting and receiving their first clients into their beautiful soul aligned practices. So congratulations, everybody. We've had other people calling money from outstanding debts. Other people have opportunities. It's just so much fun. Oh my gosh, I love being online so, 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 so much. Today, I thought that we would talk a little bit more into the masculine and feminine energy because I love it so much. And I know that many of you do too. And I wanted to talk with you about uh, a challenge that many of us have in private practice, and that's around being visible. And I want to do this, as I mentioned, through the lens of the the energy that we all experience. So for those of you who are new to the podcast, just really quickly, you might want to go back and listen to some of the earlier episodes on the masculine and feminine energy. Uh, Just very, very briefly, all of us, no matter how we identify, embody what we refer to as masculine and feminine energy. Uh, Some other cultures or systems call it yin and yang. I learned it as masculine and feminine energy. Um, And we have this in four quadrants, if you like. And people call this something different too. I learned it as sacred or divine. So we have sacred or divine feminine, the sacred or divine masculine. And then we have the wounded masculine and the wounded feminine. But you may hear about it in other terms, such as the awakened feminine and the awakened masculine, for example. I'm going to call it sacred and divine and wounded on the podcast today. So the masculine energy is very much about the doing. It's very much about, as you know, that linear thinking, that having that structure, needing the process, needing the plan. And I find, I don't know about you, but I find sometimes I just need the steps. (laughs) I find sometimes I don't need another meditation. I don't need to draw another card. I just need the steps. And I don't know if you felt like that too. But then there are other times with different things in my practice where I absolutely need to embody the feminine. But the other thing to be aware of is we're not solely and wholly in only one of those four quadrants. In fact, you'll probably find throughout the day within the practice when you're in session, for example, you could shift through, you know, two of those quadrants. Or when you're working on the practice, you might shift through all four of those quadrants. Different tasks you will bring different energy to. So today I'm talking about visibility and in my experience, one of the biggest things that impacts our ability to be visible is that regardless of how we identify, as I said, many of us seem to be in the wounded feminine, okay? So that wounded feminine energy absolutely impacts how we show up, irrespective of if we've got the strategies or not. You can have the best strategy in the world for your social media. I know because I help people create their marketing plans and their marketing strategies. But if they haven't done this inner work, the best strategies in the world won't be effective for them. That's why we're talking about it today because I want them to be effective for you. Because as you know, it's my highest intention that we are all celebrating at the end of this year having successful private practices. 
I'm going to do my level best to help you all get there with this podcast. It's my mission. <laughs> okay, so what's the wounded feminine? Just to, you know, discuss this again because it is so juicy and interesting. When we're in that space, we can feel like we're not worthy. So what does that look like when we're trying to be visible? Well, how can you show up and, you know, invite people to book an inquiry call with you or, or make the book now, you know, hit the book now button if you don't feel like your service is worthy enough or if you don't feel like you are worthy enough, okay? Remember, whatever energy we put out, we're going to have reflected back to us. That's the law of vibration. It's the law of attraction, the one and the same thing. Whatever you're seeing in your practice right now is a direct manifestation of your past thoughts, feelings and actions. Okay, so you need to really understand if you want to be calling in perfect for your practice clients, that you have to feel worthy of working with them, worthy of getting paid, worthy, 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 worthy. So if that's something that you're not overly comfortable yet, your self-worth, then absolutely either go and get your own counselling, uh, maybe discuss it in supervision or get some coaching around this because it will be an impediment to you being able to call in clients and create turnover for your practice. Okay, that's the first one. A second aspect of that wounded feminine energy is when we feel guilt. Okay, so maybe we feel guilty. Sorry, if you hear Gabe growling and barking, it's because the garbage men are coming to pick up the bins. <laughs> and he doesn't like the garbage men. Gabe, good boy. Come here, come. Good boy. Sorry, everybody. I'll just give him a quick, I call them L-O-L-L-I-E-S, but they're not, they're just liver treats. You go have a lolly. Good boy. Okay. Yeah, we see counsellors often struggle. Uh, and it's not just counsellors. I don't know why I'm saying that, but I see it a lot in the counselling community, but also with psychologists and social workers is fear around charging money because we tend to hold a belief that people won't be able to afford it or we feel yeah just really guilty about our fee being too high and that that's maybe going to stop people from being able to access a service but that guilt shows up in other ways as well in fact even if we have those fantastic uh, processes in place like cancellation policies for example uh, if we feel guilty about enforcing them or invoking them or applying them or whatever verbiage you like to use that's also going to have a very significant impact on your practice one of the other things that comes up a lot too is feeling shame you know shame around well you know uh Am I really qualified enough? Do I have enough education behind me to be doing this work or charging this fee? Or um, am I expected to know everything about everything? So shame comes into it as well. There's also, uh, I'm trying to read my writing here, uh, over explaining. Yeah, always over explaining. So what this looks like is when you do receive an inquiry and somebody asks you about booking a session, you hit them with a lot of, you know, too much information, over explaining everything, over justifying everything, talking about um, how you can't or you don't do rebates, stuff like that. And in the end, the client feels overwhelmed by it. And the conversation's not about them anymore. It's about you trying to convince them to book in. And then the client runs for the hills and they don't book in a session. And then you feel back to unworthy, guilty, shame, stuff like that. Over explaining happens a lot. We see it when not only people are trying to get clients to book single sessions, but also when uh, practice owners are running online programs for example and they're selling those programs they'll over explain everything in their sales page they'll over explain everything in the landing page it's too much information that it puts people off it just becomes overwhelming 
Something else that we see when people are operating in their practice uh, from the wounded feminine is they often are apologizing and they do it sort of on autopilot. So this feeling like we need to be apologizing or be apologetic for things absolutely impacts our visibility because we feel like we shouldn't be being visible uh, and so we apologize. Oh, sorry. Hey, it's me again. I'm sending you another email to let you know the next episode's out. Oh, I feel so sorry for, you know, jumping up in your feed again, but this is happening. Or I'm so sorry about the price or I'm so sorry that I don't work after hours. Or, I'm so sorry that I don't work weekends. It's this over apologizing, over explaining, uh, not fantastic. The other thing that can uh, impact our ability to be visible when we're in that wounded feminine energy is our ability to really actively repress what's true for us. And this, I feel, and in my experience, happens a lot when I'm supporting practice owners to identify their message and to identify their niche. This is the practice owner who says, oh, I don't want a niche. I don't agree with that because I can do everything because in the past I have seen clients with anxiety and clients with depression and clients with this and clients with that. So yeah, I do do all of those things. And if I just say I do one, then that's not fair on all of the other clients and I might miss out on work and da 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 da. But when I say, who would you really love to work with though? If Even if you weren't getting paid for it, who would you really love to work with? They'll give me a client group straight away. By holding back what's true for you, it impacts your ability to be visible. One of the other things that we see is like this, you know, concept of polarity again. And by that, I mean, a fear around standing for something. Because we think, oh, if I stand for something, then there are going to be people who disagree with me. That's true because what you're saying is by taking a stand, you're polarizing. Whatever your stand is, it's going to be polarizing. And by definition, that means you're going to have half the people in support, half the people not. But it's much better for you to stand for something and be known for standing for something than for you to be lost in the white noise and to be only attracting clients on price. Because at the end of the day, if a client looks at 10 different counselling websites and it's 10 people who aren't speaking into their truth, who are holding back, who are being very general for whatever reason, what happens for a client then is the client will then say, oh, they all kind of do the same things, don't they? Uh, they all say that it's private and it's confidential and it's a safe space. And yeah, 10 out of 10 say they deal with anxiety. 10 out of 10 say they deal with depression. 10 out of 10 say they deal with families. 10 out of 10 say they deal with individuals. 10 out of 10 say, do you see what I mean? Um, so the only thing that's going to differentiate you is your fee. And do you really want to be chosen because you were the cheapest counsellor? No, you don't want to be chosen because you're the cheapest therapist. Uh, not fantastic. When we get into price wars like that, it's not healthy for the client and it's not healthy for your business and it's certainly not healthy for our industry. So yeah, repressing your truth absolutely has a very big impact on your visibility and will stop you from filling your diary. Also, things like feeling insecure, putting yourself in that victim mode, uh, saying that, you know, you're in this to me consciousness. Uh, I can't be public with my story because People will hate it and people will judge me and I'll get trolled and all of this sort of stuff. That's putting yourself in victim mindset and that's making everything about you when in fact you're losing sight here of the big picture. The big picture is for you to keep your focus on your clients and keep them in the forefront of your mind. Once you start making private practice marketing about you, you've lost the game. You have to hold in your mind that this is about and it's for your clients, okay? Ignoring your intuition is a big one. Your intuition is going to say, hey, I need to be connecting with people. 
But if you're in that fear mindset, you're going to ignore that intuition and you're going to play small and you're going to restrict yourself and constrict the energy. And as a result of that, of course, you're not going to be seen by clients that want to book services with you. Other things that we see when people are in that space of the wounded feminine is uh, also includes negative self-talk. I'm no good. Why am I doing this? No one's going to watch it anyway. Uh, what if I stuff it up? What if my Zoom glitches? What if I make a mistake? Do you know what I mean? All of that sort of negative self-talk. Um, that needs to be turned around because if you try and be visible yet you're undermining yourself or you're self-sabotaging with this internal monologue, we're going to have problems and you're only going to be attracting people that confirm the negative things that you're telling yourself. It's interesting to notice that studies also show that when we're in that space of the wounded feminine, we're often also disconnected from our body. And that what I mean by that is you might have a sense or you might have a feeling physiologically that something's not right. Uh, maybe you feel nervous uh, or maybe you feel a pull towards something. Maybe something feels like you could do it or it's possible to do it. By us ignoring what's happening physiologically, we dishonor ourselves, you know, The physical manifestations come from our emotions, which come from thoughts. So, you know, for things to get to that physical state, they must have gone through those two other phases first and not been given the level or care of attention that they really, really needed from you. So ignoring physiological signs uh, about what it means for you to show up and be visible will also impact your ability to get your message across to people who want to hear what you have to say. Okay, so learning how to work with that is going to be really, really important. Uh, other things that are associated with the wounded feminine when it comes to visibility is a sense of desperation. You know, feeling desperate. I, you know, people might have a self talk that says, I know I should do a Facebook Live, or I know I should post more regularly, or I know I should write my own content, or I know this and I really need clients and da 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 da. Or when you share a message on email or a blog on your website or whatever it is, from that energy of desperation, that's actually going to repel clients from booking in with you. Okay because of the desperation that's associated with it it's going to come out in the way you write or the way you talk or the way you show up the way you present all those kinds of things okay as too would things like self-doubt the flip side of this though is when we understand and when we feel safe to embody or activate our divine sacred feminine energy an abundance of opportunities becomes available to us when we're speaking about visibility for example you get to engage in creative things you get to see things outside of the box this means that your capacity to identify your point of difference is going to be much higher than if you're in that wounded space When we're in that divine feminine, we're really good at connecting. We're really good at establishing rapport. Can you hear the kookaburras? Oh my goodness, Australia, huh? And that's important because we are in the business of being able to uh, connect with people at a soul level. This is what we do. So by being a fuller embodiment of our feminine energy, We're able to attract clients to us because of our radiance, because we become magnetic for others that want to be in that energy that we're sharing, that we're sending out to the world. It improves the way that we write our copy. So this means we write better emails, we write more powerful posts on our blogs, we create more compelling content for our social media. And it happens all because we are coming from that place of 
wanting to connect, to nourish, to be creative, to think differently. We're embodying trust. We're leaning into some things. We're leaning away from others. And it's this beautiful sort of give and take. And when we're in this space, it makes it really easy and light and organic for us to be able to niche. And we see then that niching allows us to really focus, to really focus on the specialness of those clients and those presenting problems that we really do deeply truly love to work with it's all the really juicy stuff that we love to work with and we understand and we trust and we surrender that uh, we surrender to the universe because we know we're always exactly where we need to be and we know and we trust that there's always plenty of clients for the presenting challenge which we choose to niche in and there's always plenty of clients available to meet us in our price point okay when we write from that place our messaging becomes crystal clear and it lands for our perfect for our practice clients it helps them get a better understanding of us as practitioners as therapists But it also demonstrates that we too have a deeper understanding of where our clients may be sitting because we can go and meet them there. We can meet them where they are and we can bring them to where they want to be side by side. It's not us leading as a masculine energy would. A masculine energy would say, hey, come here, follow me. I'm the Pied Piper. I've got the torch. I'll show you the way. Just get behind me and I'll go first. It's not that sort of energy. It's let's all do this together. One in, all in. I'm going to walk beside you. I'm going to take you by the hand. I'm going to put my hand on your shoulder and we're going to get through this together. That's the embodiment of the beautiful feminine energy. So when it comes to visibility, have an opportunity, give yourself a moment to really reflect on what you have heard today on this episode of the podcast and think about, you know, am I more embodying the wounded energy here when it comes to being visible in my practice or am I more embodying the feminine Ask yourself, what am I seeing when it comes to visibility in my practice? How have I manifested that? What were the thoughts, the feelings and the actions that I've been taking that have brought this about, that have manifested this? And then the next question is, how can I take responsibility to course correct what do I need to work on what what are my big two things here that need to be addressed in order for me to become a more full embodiment of that healthy feminine energy okay so there's some journal prompts for you and of course if you need help with any of this don't hesitate to reach out and let me know. I always put my details in the show notes but I know many of us are already connected online um, so if you need me just do a search and you'll find me. <laughs> uh, I was wondering if maybe in our next show on Wednesday it would be helpful for me to do the flip side of this and look at the masculine for you uh, and maybe give you some suggestions or some guidance if you like it around how the wounded masculine and the you know awakened or sacred or divine masculine interplay when it comes to being visible in your private practice with the intention of this new awareness being able to support you in attracting more clients to your practice so that you can build it up before the end of the year okay All right, everybody, thank you so much for listening. And thank you to everybody who's booked in for our program, Clients on Demand. I cannot wait to start. We start on the 31st of March. And uh, yeah, that's when you'll have the first little bit of content drops, which is so fun. And then we've got our first group coaching call the following Monday. So I will look forward to seeing all of you inside then. Uh, For everybody else, thank you so much for listening to 
another podcast. You guys are the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a beautiful day. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Private Practice with Soul podcast today. If you're looking for clarity, if you need help with branding, your processes and bringing everything into alignment with your soul's purpose for your private practice, head to the show notes and click the link for more information about the Private Practice Monthly Mentorship Group. You are going to love it. I can't wait to see you in there. Thanks so much for listening. Bye.